Uh, here is Goyan and Deirdre from Oradas. Cool, thank you. Um, well, I wasn't really happy to be here. I'll just introduce myself again. My name is Goyan. I'm an organizing fellow here with Oradas and my colleague. Hi, I'm Deirdre. I'm the Midwest Regional Organizer for um, Oradas. So Goyan and I are responsible primarily for Chicago, but technically for everything from Nebraska to Ohio and South Kentucky. So lots of key lots of targets. Uh, I'm just going to give you an overview of what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to try to keep it short, interesting, and engaging, and hopefully we can get some really cool questions from you. We thought this was a perfect opportunity for us to present. I had an opportunity to come to a couple of these, uh, and I just love the energy and ideas that people have here. But also for us, I um, mean, our organization is all about having a political system, and here are the people who are doing this as well in different spheres. So. We're going to tell you about how we got started. We are fairly young. And then from there, we have a really cool funding story. From there, we're going to move on to tell you what you're currently working on, which is immigration reform, give you kind of the political spiel and what's happening in DC, then tell you about the digital tools that we're using to hack DC and get the immigration advocacy move forward. And uh, last, we're going to talk about our future plans and how you can get involved in the discussions that we are going to be having in the next couple of months. And they're very interesting. I'm sure a lot of you are going to be very interested in it. So with Deirdre, I'm going to start us off with our founding story. So how many of you guys recognize one of these faces? Seriously, no one? So um, we were founded by leaders in tech, um, primarily out in Silicon Valley, but um, it's a pretty wide national network now, to do two things. Um, our first goal is to um, push for comprehensive immigration reform, preferably this year. Um, our second goal is a broad one, to engage the tech community in politics and policy, um, and to create a grassroots network that can advocate for policies that will support and advance the knowledge economy. Um, and that's a really, really big one, but we'll talk about that a little later. Um, and our founding story is actually pretty cool. Um, so one day, Mark Zuckerberg was tutoring at a high school out in California. Um, it was a group of seniors. They were ready to go to college. And so he asked the room uh, what would be the natural question that you would ask seniors. Um, what college are you going to? Uh, where are you most excited to get into? And the response, rough response that he got from many of the students in the room was, well, I'm not going to college. Um, the reason I'm not going to college is because I'm undocumented, so I'm not going to be able to get financial aid. Um, and Mark Zuckerberg was kind of like, well, I just cheated these kids, they're right, why wouldn't they go to college? Um, and then said, well, I can do something about this. Um, so he emails the guy who's right in the middle, in the bottom, that's Joe Green. Um, he's the Harvard roommate of Mark Zuckerberg's that you didn't see in the social network. <laughs> and um, he's kind of a political guy. Um, Mark Zuckerberg and some of the others went out and did Facebook. Um, Joe Green went and did the Kerry campaign. One of those was very successful. Um, but uh, Joe is the political brain in kind of this in this network, and so they sat together and Mark said, "Well, what do we need? What do I need to do to try to pass this um, this reform bill? What do we what what do we need to change the political system?" Um, and Joe gave him a couple of ideas, and from there forward, you asked his board. Um, so we've always tried strive to live up to that first idea that um, the right people in the right place can really make a difference in politics and do something as large and transformational as pass immigration reform, which is a, a problem in this country that hasn't seen major reform since 1986. Um, and for context, 1986 is probably, it's, it's definitely before I was born, and probably before most of the tech companies that you all think about on a regular basis were even founded. Um, so our goal is to mobilize that tech community around um, policies that grow the knowledge economy. Um, so what does that mean? Uh, first of all, it means that the tech community is a group of people that doesn't always engage in politics. You know that better than anybody, since you are the, the heart of engaging in politics and policy, um, civic action of the tech community. Um, but we want to see more of that. We want to see um, engagement on, on the kind of level that um, many people haven't even taken before. Um, and for that, the big reason for that is because the economy is changing and our country is changing. And you folks in this room and the tech community are the ones that are changing it. Um, so what does that mean? That means that most of the people in this room, most of the people in the tech community nationally, know things like driverless cars will probably be a reality in 20 years. Um, that means a lot of things, but what it also means is that every truck driver in the country will be an employee. Um, and that's a big scary thing that politicians in Washington aren't talking about, because right now they're holding meetings on Capitol Hill where they're talking about bringing back manufacturing jobs from the 1950s. 
um, that's not helpful. So we want the tech community to be engaged in that conversation so that they're talking about the right things and making the right policies to continue to advance the economy. Awesome. So we're currently very focused on passing immigration reform. Yeah, so like you just said, I mean, immigration reform is what we were found in. Uh, and that was the basic idea we trying forward. And we're currently, like, our big, big, big effort is um, getting the immigration reform passed. Um, kind of three principles that we um, stand behind is reforming the legal immigration system, fixing the current enforcement, and then establishing a pathway to citizenship. Um, those are the three principles that we stand behind, and those are the three principles that were included um, in the Senate bill that was passed last summer in June. Um, currently, after the Senate has passed the bill, the next step is for the bill to go on the floor of the House, and that's where it's uh, standing at this point. Uh, why are we doing this? Yeah, there's this great story about Mark Zuckerberg and the nation of undocumented immigrants, but we also know that I mean this country is a nation of immigrants. So I'd be curious <coughs> here. You can raise your hand if you're an immigrant. But if you okay, I have business in. Does that count? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first generation immigrant. So let me ask you a final question. Do you have a friend who's an immigrant? Raise your hand if a friend who's an immigrant. Cool. So in a sense, it, it affects all of us here. Um, I can give you all the statistics. I mean, how many percent of students here who are in engineering, who are immigrants, people who start Fortune 500 companies who are immigrants? I mean, all of these things are obvious. If you're an immigrant yourself, you have a friend who is an immigrant. Um, you came here, or your parents came here, or your grandparents came here because they want to uh, start something new, because they want to start a better life here. But currently, like you said, the system here is not that great. Uh, for a nation of immigrants, United for a nation of immigrants, the United States has really, really bad immigration policy in Georgia, as I reflected on and said they, they haven't changed since 1986. Uh, so like I mentioned, um, there's been a big, big push about around immigration reform. There's a lot of immigration groups who are working on it, in addition to for US. Uh, the bill was passed in the Senate, the Comprehensive Immigration Reform Bill. And then from there, uh, we moved on to the House of Representatives where the bill is currently uh, standing. Uh, current discussion in DC is to get to break the big comprehensive bill into pieces and hopefully pass it that way. Um, just to give you a brief civics lesson here, uh, House of Representatives, 435 members, 218 uh, are needed votes to pass immigration reform. And in the House, you have 200, 233 Republicans and 200 Democrats. And then in Illinois, we have six people that we're targeting that are not yet in favor of immigration reform. So all of our advocacy efforts that I'm going to be talking about are directed toward these Congress men and women in Illinois uh, who we hope to persuade the foundation of immigration reform. Now, how are we doing all this? I think this is the part you're going to find very interesting. Well, we're using the old school organizing tactics, but we're also using a lot of really cool digital tools uh, to advance our advocacy efforts. Um, the first um, trap, if you want to call it, one of the things that we're doing is direct advocacy. And with direct advocacy, um, there's four categories in here. So we're getting the right people for the tech community in front of their congressmen or women to talk to them and tell them how immigration reform is impacting their business. So for example, in October, we had around 100 or so leaders in tech fly out to DC and meet with their members of Congress to talk to them about immigration reform. We have our volunteers across the Midwest who are attending uh, town halls to voice their concern on immigration reform with their member of Congress. And then we also have uh, our supporters, Colin Ryder, member of Congress, uh, and then be active on social media. And we recognize that social media is very important. So we came out about two months ago, we came out with this really cool app. It's called Push for Reform. Uh, it was developed by a group of 20 dreamers. Does everyone know what a dreamer is here? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, a dreamer is, dreamers would be people who came over to this country. They were brought over by their parents to this country, and they're currently undocumented. So we brought three dreamers from across the country who have a CS background, 
out to San Francisco to work with Reed Hoffman and Mark Zuckerberg and have a big hackathon. And this is one of the tools that they came up with as a result of that hackathon. You can play a video. So we're building a tool, it's a web application, we call it a push for reform, and it's a tool that allows a few, that connects people with representatives and empowers them through influence and great reform. We spoke to uh, Mark Zuckerberg, he, you know, he was really critical um, about like certain areas of the application, but he was supported, you know, overall, he said that, you know, it was an amazing idea. Also, Reed uh, from uh, LinkedIn, he, he also gave us, you know, a lot of ideas. And the winner for advocacy is Push for Reform. We thought the, um, uh, I guess, the best place in the advocacy section, where it means that we created, I guess, the best application that will allow people to engage uh, with their representatives and um, push them to take meaningful action in immigration reform. So he doesn't really do a great justice of explaining what the push for reform is. But basically, it's an app where you log in, you type in your uh, zip code, and it connects you to your congressperson. You can see their stance on immigration reform, especially on different parts of the bill. So whether they support certain parts, or they don't support certain parts, or whether they're unclear, they have unclear position on some of the issues. And then you can engage in direct advocacy, whether writing a letter to them, tweeting, or using Facebook. So you mentioned that they, you, you found out their position on different parts of the bill. How did you collect the information on, on all that? And how yes. did you break the bill apart into pieces? And did you so the, survey that? Did you call a bunch of interviews? How did you get that to Well, first, this is not something that we did, but our team in Little Team DC did a whole background research on them. Um, which is funny, like you would think that this would exist, that you would have something like this where you can just type in and see what's your content position in different parts of the bill. Uh, but no, it didn't really exist until this app came out. It's kind of have to go scavenge around, especially that connection of, yeah, you see their, their position on the bill, but then also see um, the fact that you can engage with them and say, like, hey, I really care about the uh, undocumented piece, and I really hope you're supporting it as well. So did you, like, so did they, did that research, how did that happen? I guess that's one question. Mm -hmm. is, like, how did they find out those answers? Did they have to go call them up and, like, directly ask them? Or is there a smarter way to do it, like, because of calling their political statements? At this point, I don't know. Do you, do you know the answer? So it's, um, it's very, very old school, and there isn't a smarter way to do it, is the answer. Um, it's a combination of um, coming through every interview that they do, which is a process that we continue to do. Um, so anytime a congressman comes out, so for example, um, Representative Kinzinger two weeks ago um, made a statement about the difference between pathway to citizenship and pathway to people status. Um, that's the kind of thing we take note for. It goes into push for reform as a piece of his position on the immigration reform bill. Um, but a lot of our advocacy work is also encouraging them to take positions. Um, so we send volunteers to town halls and directly ask them to support a pathway to citizenship. And depending on their response, that gets loaded into um, push for reform. But the research process itself is, is you know, it's entirely human driven. Yeah, There's no necessarily okay. smart way to do it. Um, as far as we know, it's, it's one of the more comprehensive databases of, of statements and, and positions on immigration reform. Especially now, since immigration is a very hot topic and they're changing their positions. A lot of them, I mean, as we speak, uh, so a lot of it depends on literally coming through the latest news and updates that come in, and then pulling their quotes um, to support or. Um, 